In 1914, Frank Harvey Sweet and his sons, Alfred and Henry, moved from Louisiana to a socialist colony in Llano, California. The colony was quite large at the time with over a thousand residents. Every member of the colony had a job to fulfill. Frank was the colony's bookkeeper, Henry ran the bakery, and Alfred ran a team of 16 mules that hauled logs used for lumber, cooking, and heating from Big Pines, California, all the way to the Llano Commune. In 1917, the water ran dry to Llano, and the Sweet family moved out of the commune to where they camped throughout the winter, closer to water on Big Rock Creek. It was during that time that the family went to work at nearby Valermo Ranch. Frank as bookkeeper, Henry as manager, and Alfred as the ranch foreman eventually all moved onto the ranch later that year. Valermo Ranch became very successful in growing several varieties of fruits and melons. Alfred Good at Farming decided to purchase a 10-acre parcel in Little Rock, California on the south side of Parablossom Highway and another 10-acre parcel right across the street on the north side of the highway. Alfred started farming his properties and continued overseeing the ranch in Val Yermo. Everett Martin, a well-established farmer in Little Rock, was growing pears at the time, so Alfred decided he would try something different and planted the very first peach trees in the region. Alfred planted several varieties of peaches that would ripen at different times of the season, providing a healthy income. Several years passed and then Alfred married Marion and they had two sons, one named Frank after Alfred's father and the other named Tom. In 1929, the fruit orchards were well established Alfred still worked at the Val Yermo Ranch. The ranch and both Alfred's orchards were producing a lot of fruit, most of which was shipped to Los Angeles for commercial sale. But they needed a place to sell the fruit that was too ripe to ship downtown, so Alfred and Marion set up a fresh fruit stand in the orchard north of Parablossom Highway. The property also had a single room house that they added to, which later became their residence in 1939. As time passed, Frank Sweet, Alfred and Marion's son, took over the Little Rock Orchards. Frank also took Alfred's place managing Val Yermo Ranch. Frank met a girl by the name of Mary Ritchie and they were married in 1953. Alfred had built a small house on the property for the couple and they too lived on the property. Mary and Frank eventually took over the property in 1960. Frank did the farming and Mary managed the fruit stands. Valermo Ranch eventually was purchased by Bob Wine of the famous Bob's Big Boy restaurant chain. Frank and Mary purchased part of the ranch also in an estate sale along with Bob Wine. Frank and Bob became partners and Frank and Mary moved from the fruit stand property to the Valermo Ranch. By 1969, Frank had fruit stands on both parcels that were extremely successful. Between the product that was coming off of the ranch and both orchards, they built a much larger facility. Frank not only grew peaches, but also pears, cherries, melons, apples, and more. They brought other products to sell as courtesy to their customers. The Sweets Fresh Fruit Stand now not only offered fruit, but vegetables and bulky dry goods such as nuts to include locally produced honey. The Sweets Fruit Stand not only became a destination for travelers between Los Angeles and Las Vegas, but also a store where locals shopped. Frank made an all-natural apple cider which included several varieties of his apple to get its unique flavor. They would press up to 250 gallons of apple cider on a Friday that would be consumed by the end of the weekend. Mary had been baking peach pies for years. Bob Wayne's son, Chappie, a skilled baker, gave Mary recipes for strawberry pies. Mary thought she would try to bake some pies and see how they would sell. Within a very short period, Mary's pies became famous. By 1975, the Sweets wanted to downsize a bit and decided to sell the large fruit stand operation and work the smaller stand across the street. 
It was at that time current owner Jackie Halgren and her husband Charles Louderman purchased the Sweet Fruit Stand, changing its name to Charlie Brown Farms. Jackie and Charles kicked things up a notch by adding a kitchen with a menu of delicious food and date milkshakes. Jackie pretty much ran the operation and added more items and more rooms onto the building, making Charlie Brown Farms one of the largest and most unique gift shops this side of the Mississippi. Even though Charles passed away in 1996, Jackie's touch has turned the place into an attraction that is so inviting that one can't help but stop to experience it. When approaching Charlie Brown Farms, unique signage on the exterior of the building along with a herd of dinosaur and other amusing statues will be the first thing you see. Once inside, the gift shop features candies that date back to the turn of the century. Above the displays is a historic timeline that the items follow as you go through the building. There is a soda room with a large selection of nostalgia sodas. Each brand and type have their recipe dates displayed. They still sell fruits, vegetables, and nuts just like they did when the Sweet family owned it. You can still pour yourself fresh honey and find just about any brand of hot sauce ever made. You can make fresh peanut butter and grind fresh coffee. There's everything from Davy Crockett coonskin hats to retro signage and a village of gnomes. And what used to be Frank and Mary Sweet's living room is now a large room filled with dolls, dolls, and more dolls. An exterior wind chime forest leads you to a retro toy room, a goth and a medieval area, and a building that features American-made porcelain and crockery items. The restaurant serves up a delectable menu of sandwiches, fresh barbecue, deep-fried Twinkies, funnel cakes, and a variety of over 100 types of milkshakes. Oh yeah, and please note, all of the food is cooked fresh, so don't expect fast food, expect good food. Even the side dishes like their potato salad is made fresh. If you are there to eat, place your order first, then browse the facility at your leisure. And don't worry about missing your lunch. Every room is equipped with speakers, so when your food is ready, your number will be called. Getting back to food, they manufacture their own fudge and candies daily and have a very extensive selection of jerky along with frozen wild game meats that include buffalo, kangaroo, alligator, frog legs, and more. Serving the Little Rock community, residents come to shop for fresh and locally grown fruit and vegetables and the facility serves as a meeting place for community organizations. During weekdays, small groups of handicapped children and adults come for lunch as a field trip. The kitchen is notified days in advance for the visitors that have special diets. As owner, Jackie is very respectful of family needs and employs more local community members than anyone in the area. If you talk to the staff, you will find that Charlie Brown Farms will work around their schedules. Most of the upper management are long-term employees that have worked for many years. You will even find that entire families have worked for Jackie as an employer. In recent years, Charlie Brown Farms has dealt with a lot of change. The state of California widened Parablossom Highway, which not only altered the landscape to the exterior, but also demanded a lot of new updates since the building was erected in 1969. For over 30 years, Charlie Brown Farms had been advertising on billboards that directed customers and tourists not only to Charlie Brown Farms, but to the entire downtown center of Little Rock, California. When the billboards were erected, they resided in the township of Little Rock, but since then the city of Palmdale had annexed a portion of the community's boundaries and recently forced the demolition of the signs which served as a landmark for the community of Little Rock and its residents. A compromise was reached and a new sign was erected three miles west outside of Palmdale's city limits. Who would have thought that the little fruit stand that was erected in the middle of a peach orchard in 1929 would still exist 87 years later? 
As development changes the landscape of the community of Little Rock, none of us really knows the future of Charlie Brown Farms, but we only hope that Charlie Brown Farms will be here for generations to come.